Welcome to the third episode of the Oracle of Seasons Any Percent speedrun tutorial. Last time we ended in front of Dungeon 2, Snake's Remains, so let's continue on. So when entering Dungeon 2, you go to the left side. Make sure you don't get hit there, you want to be pretty center. If you are a little bit too high, you will get hit there, and that happened there. So stay a little bit in the center, and move on. Make a stay safe here for this room. This room has four ropes in here. They can be all over the room. But luckily they chase you when you enter. So once you enter, you can go on the left side or the right side. I prefer the left side because it's way easier. And also you can slash them through the blocks if that's faster for you. Especially if there's only one left at the top, you can just go below and grab it. So after this key, you save and quit. I start an A. And you light the left torch first. Then the right torch. Doesn't matter for the puzzle, but you end up on the right side here. Which is a little bit faster. There's something in your way. Kill it. You have a sword out. This room can be annoying sometimes. It depends on where the hard heads spawn. They spawn in the middle. You can easily slash them with one slash. Like that. But if they spawn on the right, you have to detour a bit. So make sure that you cannot really slash down right. So keep that in mind. Here you have the dungeon item room. We have four of these moblins, two of these moblins. Normally you want to throw bombs at them, but you can also just use your sword on the edge of the pit and wait until they come closer. And then you get the bracelet. So at this point you want to make sure you have enough uh, enough bombs for the rest of, of the dungeon. You want at least 6 bombs. And if you haven't wasted any you should have enough. You, su you should have 7. But if you don't, here are bombs usually in these respawnable bushes. So after you have enough bombs, you go back to the start of the dungeon. And you go outside. Because there is a second entrance. That bush always has ember seed. Always nice. That moblin can be really annoying, so it's usually pretty nice to charge a spin stash. And these bushes always have hearts, so if you are low on heart, you can grab them. You won't really need that many hearts here. Yeah? You can take a few damage off your own bombs, but that's it. So, this is the part where you need those bombs. You need at least six bombs for this room. And this room is timed. It's not really hard timed, but still you want to be pretty okay with your bombs but this bomb can go down there so you can pass over the top be a little bit faster but the trick is to also uh, grab your bomb as soon as you are able to grab it and then just walk over where you want to place that bomb like at the start you grab it as soon as you enter and you drop it right there grab it and so on you keep continuing like that. And then you should have one bomb or zero bombs left afterward. Unless you got a bomb drop of course. If you got hurt by your own bombs you can grab these hearts again. But this is also a pretty tricky part. You can save two inventory menus by keeping your bracelet and bombs. But you have to make sure you don't get screwed over by all these keys flying around. It can be tricky sometimes. Maybe easier to grab your um, sword out. This room is usually pretty tame in, ter in terms of keys. It's a pretty huge room, two keys shouldn't be too much of a trouble. Too much trouble. You can grab a bomb here already. Blow it. Grab your sword and grab some extra bombs because you're gonna need them for the mini boss coming up. You can slash in the air in order to not lose your speed that you get, speed loss that you get if you slash on the ground, and just move along. So this is also the point where you want to check your uh, rupee count. Because this is where you can find a, a fixed chest with 10 rupees and you exactly need 10 rupees. So if you are short on rupees that's a really nice chest you can grab. 
I prefer if, if I have 8 rupees or more, I usually let it slide. There are a few enemies coming up, they can drop rupees. But if you have 7 or less, it, it can generally be helpful to grab that. Watch for the keys here. That pot contains some bombs, like almost always. Fix your brace without for bombs. And you want to make sure you stay above this line. This line below Link. Because then you can just throw bombs without spawning the boss. And the boss is the facade. He takes 5 bombs to kill. You don't really need to know anything about him. You can just throw 5 bombs and he's gone. Just make sure you stay above this line. He has a pretty huge hitbox so you can pretty much line up over here or below here. And it, it should hit all of the time. As long as you throw the bomb into the middle of the room. Then you want make sure you don't get wrecked by all the enemies. <laughs> wow, that was awkward. <laughs> Go down here into the spinner. You can grab a bomb early here. In order to make it blow up on time. If you throw it a little bit to the right, not too far that it doesn't hit the bomb wall, but far enough that it's uh, out of the way, you can line up on the on the left side and just walk through without taking damage at all. Now you go right here, watch out for this spark if you don't have to kill anything. You can do a nice little slash here. Knocking off of the trap. It's pretty easy to time, so time it. We usually like to kill those two keys that come charging at you after that. Because one of them is gonna be in your way or you jump down over here on the right side. There you have the boss key and then you move back. Instead of going down again you go left. Through the spinner room, south, and towards the boss room. So you have this room with these uh, three platforms. A bit like Barber, I guess. You can uh, actually get straight on to the second platform by just holding down right. Pretty handy. Now yeah, I want to have bombs and bracelets, because here we have the boss, the, the, the dongo. And as known with the dongos, you, they like to eat bombs. You throw bombs at them, does damage them, but you have to throw them in the spike in order to damage them. You have to do that four times. The first two are pretty free. Then he charges. Uh, then he starts uh, charging at you. Just have to dodge them. It's a fixed pattern, so he always charges uh, once on these. And you don't want to make him turn because turning resets his. Um, it's, it's waiting time. And that's it. So, you want to make sure you also want to, uh, yeah, the pattern of this boss. The pattern of this boss is uh, he opens his mouth twice in a row without charging at all. Then he does one charge and opens his mouth. And if you miss one bomb, it's not that bad because the fifth attack is also just an open mouth without any charges. But if you miss uh, two bombs, then uh, he charges three times and you definitely want to avoid it and I forgot to make a save state so I'm gonna load one from from another thing go over this so yeah once he gets over there you can his pattern is always the same so you can easily predict what he's gonna do and you can also grab bombs early in order to throw them as fast as possible I like to hug this wall, this corner is really nice. You go over him, under him, whatever you prefer. So yeah, after this boss fight, you can check your bomb count. If you have uh, zero bombs left, it, it can be tricky. There are a lot of random drops that you can get for extra bombs, but you will need some after Dungeon 3, once you get to the Sunken City. So if you need them, bombs. You only need one bomb drop, that's it. You only need one bomb left, that's the only thing you need. Any bombs that you have left is enough. And that's it. 
That's the essence of time. That means you've finished it. At the dungeon. So that's it for this episode. Make sure to tune in for the other part. Have a good speedrunning career.